One Million and One Nights YouTube channel presents The Epic of Gilgamesh, a tale from ancient times. Salam. Today I'll take you to a time when genies granted wishes, jinns controlled human souls, and many wonders could be found in the bazaars. I'll guide you through a journey that will last a million and one nights. Epic of Gilgamesh. My name is Gilgamesh, king of Uruk, the most splendid city in all of Mesopotamia. I was born of the passion between the priest king Lu Gobanda and the goddess Ninsen. In my youth, people described me as the most magnificent man in the world. Youth brings vigor and arrogance, and I was no exception. I employed my strength and superiority to subject people to my whims. I took newlywed maidens from their husbands' beds and demanded grand monuments in the city to exalt my name. The people of the city, weary of my tyranny, prayed to the gods to send a rival who would protect them and snatch the throne from me. What they didn't know was that they were about to create my soulmate. But I am getting ahead of myself. On the day I was born, the sun shone brightly and birds fluttered around seeking food. I felt a bit confused, but soon followed the path of the forest and adopted the lifestyle of my animal brothers. I spent many years like this until one day I encountered Shamhat, lost, and her eyes reminded me of those of a frightened deer. I concluded that she seemed harmless and left her be. However, she followed me everywhere, insisting on teaching me ridiculous ways of eating with hands and cooking food. Initially, I resisted, but she, with her deer-like eyes, soon weakened my will, and I yielded to her. Shamhat taught me the ways of love, and I vowed to care for and protect her. When I returned to the forest, my animal brothers fled from me. She explained that I had been created by the goddess Aruru to defend her people from the tyrant oppressing them. A few nights before meeting Enkidu, I had two strange dreams. In one dream, a meteorite fell, and people gathered around it. In the other, there was an axe in the streets of Uruk, drawing a crowd. My mother prophesied that a strong friend would come into my life, and the consequences would be significant. She pledged to treat my friend as her own son. I decided to accompany Shamhat to her hometown to protect her. There I met very kind people who offered me bread and beer. I felt calm and happy to have so many people by my side, so I decided to relax and enjoy their company. However, one of the villagers hurriedly told us that Gilgamesh planned to steal another bride from the altar to be the first to sleep with her. I felt furious. How could someone be so despicable to these kind people? So, I went to the place where the wedding was taking place to confront him. When I saw Enkidu, I felt first amazed and then ecstatic. Finally, a worthy opponent. His imposing body and head with large horns invited me to combat. The fight lasted seven days and seven nights. I had never felt better. However, my mother intervened and made us come to an agreement. I would be a fair king and Enkidu would stay and help me rule. After our fight, several years passed and Gilgamesh and I traveled to foreign lands where we tried to leave a mark on the world. However, at the end of each of our adventures, I always saw Gilgamesh worried. When I asked him the cause of his troubles, he always evaded the question and began planning a new adventure. One day I saw him more preoccupied than usual, and when I asked what was wrong, he replied that although we were two exceptional beings, sooner or later we would grow old and death would find us. I couldn't find the problem with this. In the forest, death gives way to life. It's a natural cycle that should not be interrupted. Gilgamesh thought differently. One day, I came up with something that would undoubtedly immortalize our names for eternity. We would be the ones to end the guardian of the cedar forest, Humbaba. Before our departure, we prepared formidable weapons. The Council of Elders expressed doubts about the expedition, but eventually they relented giving us their blessing. My mother consulted the oracle and prayed to the sun god Shamash for protection. We reached the cedar forest after three days with its nights. During the journey, I had both encouraging and foreboding dreams. When we saw Humbaba, we were frozen. Humbaba was a giant with hands that could tear trees from the ground. Gilgamesh reacted before me, just in time to move us before Humbaba threw a tree at us. The battle lasted several hours, and at various moments I thought I was going to perish at the hands of Humbaba. However, 
the gods answered Ninsun's prayer and sent a storm that made Humbaba vulnerable to our attacks. Despite his pleas for mercy, we slew Humbaba, using the cedar trees to build a gate for the temple of Nippur. Returning to Uruk, I cleaned myself and dressed in regal attire. The goddess Ishtar, captivated by my beauty, proposed marriage, promising riches. I scorned her, triggering her wrath. At the time, I did not know the consequences that would bring the goddess heartbreak. Ishtar sought revenge by unleashing the Bull of Heaven, causing havoc. However, Enkidu, aided by Shamash, defeated the Bull, offering its heart to the Sun God. Enkidu's fate took a tragic turn when he fell ill. In a terrifying dream, he saw the gods condemning him for Humbaba and the Bull of Heaven's deaths. Enkidu cursed Shamat and the hunter for taking him away from the animal community. Despite my efforts to comfort him, Enkidu accepted his impending death. Distraught, I built a magnificent tomb for Enkidu, placing it in the riverbed to protect it from grave robbers. Adorned in lion skins, I, now mourning, roamed the wilderness. Eventually, I reached the edge of the world, guarded by scorpion men. They allowed me to pass, and in darkness, I faced moments of despair and enlightenment. At the shore, a tavern keeper named Siduri saw me, and fearing me retreated. To ease her fear, I recounted my adventures in Enkidu's death. Seeking the secret of immortality, I was directed to Urshanabi, the ferryman. I overcame Urshanabi, but my hasty actions prevented me from crossing the waters of death. To proceed, I had to cut down 300 trees for bulls to navigate the treacherous waters. Upon meeting Utnapishtim, the immortal survivor of a great flood, I learned about the gods' wrath and the secrets of survival. Utnapishtim tested my worthiness by challenging me to stay awake for seven nights, a test I failed. As I returned with a thorny plant that could grant immortality, a serpent snatched it away while I bathed, leaving me in tears. Realizing the futility of escaping mortality, I returned to Uruk with Urshanabi, proudly showing him the city's strong walls. I embraced my role as a wise king on earth, acknowledging the inevitability of death. I have spent the rest of my days taking care of my people and honoring Enkidu's memory. Now, on my deathbed, I embrace death and hope it will be the door that takes me to my dearest friend so we can have more adventures together. If you enjoyed this tale of Gilgamesh and the epic adventures of Mesopotamia, Consider subscribing for more captivating stories from various realms of history and mythology. Don't forget to hit the like button to show your appreciation, and stay tuned for more narratives that transport you to the fascinating worlds of ancient legends and mythical sagas.